Oh my God. Boy, uh, you know, it's sad watching this because you know, yeah. literally everyone involved is dead, right? The referee's dead. British Bulldog's dead. His opponent, Mr. Perfect is dead. Rick Rude dead has handcuffed himself to Jim Neidhart. Also dead. Yeah. Wrestling promotion soon to be dead. I mean, look at this. Yeah, Literally every, who's that cameraman? Is that guy still alive? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if he is or not. I have to get another look at him, but I, I, I can say, use, did you use the same cameraman everywhere you went? Uh, yeah, we ended up, uh, and a lot of those were TBS guys, which, which I guess are going to end up being, uh, some cameramen for, uh, AEW show, right? You know what or I just realized? I can't believe that I'm saying this either. Is that the only black cameraman for WCW? Cause I don't remember. No, we had a couple of them. We had, we had, we had, uh, we had a number of, uh, of African Americans working for us in production. I'm not saying that there weren't more African Americans on the squad. I'm just saying, I feels like in every shot, I'm like, I'm just like, okay, that's Jackie Crockett or not. It's like, right. whenever I watch an old WCW show with you, I just assume I have two classifications for the cameraman. Are they Jackie Crockett or are they not? That's all I know. And so right. I was like, Hey, well, who's this guy? And I'm, I just see his pant leg and I'm like, okay, yep. maybe that's, well, no, it can't be, it can't be Jackie. Cause he only wears shorts. Mm -hmm. And then when they get a watch and I'm like, wait a minute, that's a black dude. Like, I right. don't remember like in my, as I file away the different cameraman <laughs> from who's Jackie Crockett and who ain't, I just didn't remember seeing the, I didn't remember seeing a black dude there. Yeah, there was, uh, gosh, there was, a, a one of our cameramen, one of our cameramen went on to be, and still works for NFL films. Who's you know? that? Uh, his name is Al. I'm going to say Al Maxwell, but that's wrong. Uh, but his name is Al yeah. and, he, and he was a cameraman for us and it was a very good one. And, uh, he went on to have a great career away from wrestling. You know, when we started Conrad, when we started, we just used wherever we would go, we would use cameramen. And then it got to the point to where we wanted to use our same guys because that's what Vince did because you use your same guys who knew how to shoot wrestling. And, um, uh, so we used our same guys and traveled them everywhere. And it was a TBS crew, basically. Sure. Turner, Turner, because that's who we were. Well, that's the reason I asked if you use different guys, because I know, huh, and I know from experience now, like in Las Vegas, nope, got to use union dudes or, yeah. or just pay union dudes to sit there and eat a sandwich. And that's kind of what we did. A lot of these places. So let's but, talk about what else is coming up here on the show. We've got uh, great American bash 1997 coming up on July 17th. And that's an interesting show because you got Mortis and Wrath starting out against Glacier and Ernest Miller. Yeah. Then you got Jericho and Ultimo Dragon. Then you got the Steiner Brothers taking on Great Muda and Masahiro Chono. Then you've got Hooventude, Hector Garza, and Lismark Jr. taking on Laparca, Psychosis, and Viano 4. Chris Benoit is in there with the Taskmaster in a retirement match. Jarrett is finally going to settle his feud with uh, Steve McMichael. Then we've got Scott Hall and Randy Savage taking on DDP and Kurt Henning. Roddy Piper's in there with Ric Flair. And your main event is a tag team match. Lex Luger and the Giant taking on Hulk Hogan and Dennis Rodman. This mm. was way ahead of its time. <laughs> it was. Well, I'm just saying Dennis Rodman in a main event like this, this was major news. I mean, we look back now well, and Dennis Rodman is a funny footnote in history, but he was the pop icon or cultural icon I mean, he, he was everywhere. He was, he was on the cover of magazines and, and inquirers and all the cable news shows. And I mean, it, he was showing up to his book signings in a wedding dress. I mean, he was Mr. Controversy and sure he was yeah. constantly in trouble, you know, for bad, not necessarily trouble, just garnering headlines, you know, crazy hairstyles or, you know, crazy, random, weird wedding ceremonies and drunken escapades. And it was just, it was news, everything he did. And, and we'll cover that one on July 17th. And then on July 24th, you weren't there for it, but a lot of people call it the best pay-per-view WCW ever did. And that makes sense because you weren't there to fuck it all up. Uh, <laughs> it was great American bash 1989. And we're going to get to that one on the 24th of July. And I'm really excited to cover that one we're right here upon the 30 year anniversary. That'll be the day after the 30 year anniversary. And this card is just absolutely loaded. We've got Dan Spivey and Sid vicious. Um, in a, in a two ring 
King of the Hill Battle Royal with Bill Irwin and Brian Pillman and Eddie Gilbert and Kevin Sullivan and Mike Rotundo and Ranger Ross and Rick Steiner and Ron Simmons and Scott Hall and Scott Steiner and Steve Williams and Terry Gordy. And then we've got Pillman and Irwin. And then we've got the skyscrapers and the dynamic dudes. And then we've got Cornette and Paulie Dangerously in a tuxedo match, which I can't believe is a real thing. Mm. And then the Steiner brothers are in there with the varsity club. And then Sting takes on Great Muda. Process that. Sting and Great Muda for the TV title. And then for the U.S. title, Lex Luger and Ricky Steamboat. And then a War Games match with the Road Warriors, the Midnight Express, and Dr. Death taking on the fabulous Freebirds and the Samoan SWAT team. And your main event that goes 17 minutes, Ric Flair and Terry Funk. One of the best pay-per-views ever. And we're finally getting to cover it and we're doing it on July 24th. Wow. That's uh, that's a pretty stacked card, man. Sting, great Muda. Holy shit. I mean, that's way cool stuff. Yeah, that is cool shit. And then our last one that we've got planned July 31st, we'll round up the month of July here. It's a uh, clash of the champions. 31. This one went down at, um, Daytona beach at the ocean center in August of 95. The main event is why we're really covering it, but on the undercard it's Ming and Kurosawa taking on sting and road warrior Hawk diamond Dallas page taking on Alex, Wright. The renegade is in there with Paul Orndorff. That's real. And then we've hmm. got the Harlem heat and sister Sherry taking on bunkhouse buck, Dick Slater and Colonel Robert Parker in a six person tag match. But the main event, unbelievably it's a handicap match. Ric Flair and Arn Anderson on one side, Vader on the other. Takes less than seven minutes for Vader to beat the fuck out of both of them. <laughs> so we'll cover that one next on uh, July 31st. There's your your full lineup wow. of what's coming, baby. Wow. I didn't even remember Kurosawa. What really? The fuck? Yeah, there's a lot I didn't remember. There you go. So hey, at, le- at least we talked through this shit, right? No, I agree. This is, this is horse shit. There's a lot of good stuff on this show. This happens to not be one of them. Right. Uh, it sucks too, because these are absolute legends, but the creative here just kind of sucked. Yeah. By the way, speaking of absolute legends, it was great. And uh, a thumbs up to everybody who worked on the Owen Hart. Look back at Owen Hart, remembering Owen Hart that we did at, at Starcast too, especially Davey Boy Smith Jr., who I thought did a great job for us as well. By the way, it's a, it's in the Observer last week that uh, everybody and their brothers looking at Davey Boy right now. Does that surprise you? Mm, no, not at all. It's really he's it's like, really weird that he's made it this long. If I'm honest with you, I mean, I know yeah. he's really enjoyed his time in Japan and he's gone about it smart. But I mean, with a guy who's got that heritage, who's got that pedigree, and he's that height, because this is not a little dude. Nope. You know the idea that. And I know he's doing stuff with MLW. I'm not discounting that at all, but I'm just right. saying that the, the idea that, you know, AEW or WWE one or the other hasn't already tried to like snap him up to me yeah. is, I mean, I guess they are now lots of interest from everywhere. So not, that might be the last time we can have him at Starcast, but <laughs> right. no. it was cool to have him. Yeah, you're right. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's legit, man. He, and, and he's a, he's a good guy and he, he respects the business because of his heritage. 